So far we have seen how to construct an AND logical gate neural network or how to train this network is the edge weights are not appropriate. But there are several much more complex uh, neural networks with hidden layers. So here a typical neural network consists of an input layer, one or more hidden layers. Usually they are just a single hidden layers. But for example Google's deep learning uses several hidden layers. And of course an output layer. And because it's a feed-forward neural network, we are going to connect the neurons or the nodes with the half of directed edges. So here we have an input X and an input Y and a single output uh, output neuron. But we can have as many input neurons, as many hidden neurons and as many output neurons as we want. And it's very important that we always need a bias with value 1, the value is always 1 for these bias neurons, and it's to be able to control the output. For example, consider the situation when the x and the y are both equal to 0, and we want the output not to be 0 even when the input is 0, and this is why we need this extra bias uh, neuron, and the feedforward neural network always consists some biased uh, neurons, so this is why it needs. And of course we assign an edge weight to every directed edge and we initialize it randomly. It's very important that uh, at the beginning we don't know the concrete uh, edge weights because if we would know it we, we don't even have to train our neural networks and this is why training come, uh, come, come to be because uh, we should get the appropriate edge weights with the help of the continual updating of these uh, edge weights due to the training. So, for example, the problem is how we are able to compute the values for A, D and C. We have to sum up the neuron values multiply by the edge weights accordingly. For example, if you want to calculate the value for A, we have to consider the bias, uh, uh, bias neuron and the bias uh, edge pointing to it, then the X neuron and uh, accordingly uh, the, the, the given edge, and of course there's a directed edge from Y to A, so we have to consider it too. So, if we are talking about the A neuron, we are going to store a temporary variable, temp A for example, it is going to be equal to the bias node times the bias weight plus the X value times X weight to A plus Y value times the Y weight to A. So, it is going to be the bias uh, value is 1 and the bias edge weight is 1 pointing to A. This is why 1 times 1 is the first uh, the first section. The second part of the equation is 1, one times 2Y because the X is equal to 1 so the value is X is 1 and uh, value of the edge weight pointing from x to a is going to be 2, so 1 times 2, plus 0 times 0 that 5, y, because y is equal to 0, and the edge pointing from y to a has an edge weight 0 that 5. It is going to be 3, so we have a temporary variable 3, and we have to calculate whether or uh, neuron a will fire or not. And how are we going to do this? With the help of activation functions. So we have to use activation functions to calculate the activation level of a given neuron. It yields whether the given neuron will fire or not. Uh, up to this point we use the signum function. It is going to fire when the value is greater than zero or if it's not going to fire when its value is less than zero, so minus one or plus one. If we consider the f situation for the AND neuron and logical gate neural network, there's a signum function too, but there we have shifted this function to not zero but to uh, negative two, because when the value is greater than two, it is going to fire, and when the value is less than two, 
it's not going to fire. It is the same signal function, function with some transformation. Sometimes it's good to be able to calculate the derivative of this activation function to be able to train properly our uh, neural network. We are not going to talk about it because it's a bit dif difficult. But the sigma it function is very, very appropriate for these kinds of situation. The problem, it doesn't have any negative values. And that's why the third activation function is the hyperbolic tangent function. It is be better because it can have negative values as well. So these are the three most important activation functions. We are going to restrict our calculations to the signal function. So it is going to be plus one or minus one. So here we calculated and the temporary a variable is going to be three. So we have to calculate the signum of this variable, the signum of the temporary a, because it's greater than zero, it is going to yield us plus one. So this neuron is going to fire. Then, so a is equal to one. Then we have to calculate the same for the b. The temporary b is equal to the bias times the bias weight, the x value times the x weight to b, not the x weight to a as the previous, plus uh, y value times y weight to b. And it is going to be 3 again. The signum of this 3 is going to be plus 1, so the value for the b is equal to plus 1. It is going to fire. What about the c? If the bias times the bias weight plus the x value times the x weight to c plus the y value times the y weight to c, it is going to give us minus 1. This, if we take the signum value, I mean the, the, the signum function, it going to yield minus 1. So the c is equal to minus 1. We calculate the output the same manner. We have to bias value times bias weight plus weight a times weight uh, the, the value of a times the weight a uh, to the output and so on. It is going to give us 2.5. If we take the signum uh, of this temporary output variable, it is going to give us plus 1. So this is how an neural network uh, uh, works in practice. So we have the input value if x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 0, our neural network is going to give us plus 1. We have a training set that's going to consist of values that we know before constructing our neural network algorithm, such as the logical table for the AND logical gate. We have the, for example, in this situation, we know for certain that if x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 1, we have to get an output 0, for example. That's the right answer. Here we get plus 1. Why? Because the edge weights in our neural networks are not tuned perfectly. So we have to train our network according to the error. We have discussed how to calculate the error terms and we have to run our training algorithm as far as there's a difference between the, the, the predicted value for the output and the actual value that, that we know from the training set. So this is how this works in practice for a rather complex neural network.